Ladies and gentlemen, this is a concept called the mole, one of the most important concepts in chemistry at our level. Um, it's so important that we understand what's going on here because this is going to be used so much in the coming days um, and weeks um, in our class. So uh, let's talk about what we're talking about here, the mole. Um, first off, um, the mole isn't just some little furry creature that digs through the ground. It's, it's an idea in chemistry that represents a number. So I'm going to use the example here of a dozen and we all know that a dozen is equal to 12. Now, it doesn't matter what we're talking about here. 12 is always a dozen. So I could say we have 12 eggs, and then equals one dozen eggs. I could say we have 12 atoms, and that would equal one dozen atoms. And so we have the same concept in chemistry, and the, chemi the concept in chemistry is called a mole. Now, a mole is not a molecule. Although moles can be used to describe molecules, it is a different concept. So sometimes students see um, the word mole and molecule and they think they're the same and they're not. Um, we could say this is, this is an equality, just like 12 atoms is one dozen or one dozen is 12 eggs. Um, a mole in chemistry is equal to a fixed value. And the fixed value is quite a large number. It's in scientific notation 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. Um, that's a large, quite large number. That's going to be 6.02 with about 21 zeros or so. I have to write that out. That's going to be a mole. And it, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. If we had a mole of eggs, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. If we had a mole of uh, marbles, we'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd marbles. It's quite a large number. We use this in chemistry because atoms are so very small. They, um, we need something to keep track of these very small atoms that are that are all around us. So one of the one of the things that we do say is we say that a mole is equal to, like we said, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we're going to call these particles because in chemistry we have different types of particles depending on what we're talking about. Now, this number here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole, is also is given a number um, in honor of a very famous chemist, and we call this Avogadro's. Avogadro's number, 6.02. So if you ever hear Avogadro's number, you just think 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, it's equal to one mole. Now let's talk about these types of particles that I had mentioned with respect to a mole down here below. I'm going to scroll down. And there's basically three types of particles that we can address um, with respect to um, Avogadro's number in the mole. The first type of particles are atoms. And uh, we typically say um, atoms are monatomic atoms, um, things like iron, copper, um, maybe helium or xenon. Notice these are not compounds, they're just individual. We, we, ref, we reference these guys as atoms. So if we said we had one mole of, um, let's say, silver, that would be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. So atoms, because it's a single atom. And that's the we use atoms that way. Down here for particles, we use molecules. These are going to be our molecular compounds. Now remember, molecular compounds were nonmetals, bonded with nonmetals, including hydrogen. And so um, for molecules, we could have things like carbon dioxide. Um, water would be a molecular compound. It does have hydrogen in it, but it is still a molecular compound. Um, PCl3, phosphorus trichloride. These would be all considered molecules because they're molecular compounds. So we could say, so if we had one mole of water, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. And so there we go. Scrolling down here a little bit more, we can also talk about formula units. Now formula units are used for ionic compounds. Now remember ionic compounds are when we have a metal bonded ionically with a nonmetal. And so um, good examples of ionic compounds would be anybody with a metal in it, NaCl or Pb, 
NO3, iron 3 nitrate. Um, they have metals in them, and those metals let us know that we have an ionic compound. So if we had one mole of, let's say, um, potassium iodide, um, that would be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of Ki potassium iodide because it is a formula unit because it's an ionic compound. The next thing we want to do is we want to start dealing with mole conversions. And this is where the math comes in. And I have a very specific way I like people to do mole conversions in my class. And so first off, we're going to write the equality up here that one mole is equal to, and I think by now you know, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. It could be atoms, it could be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be formula units. Really depends on what we're talking about here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate in this first example the number of atoms in 2.5 moles of copper. And so um, what I'm going to do is first off I need to identify my known quantity in this, in this problem. And um, my known quantity in this problem is going to be my 2.5 moles of copper. That's my known quantity. And so I'm going to write that down first, um, 2.5 moles of copper. Sometimes chemists write moles, M-O-L, as an abbreviation, which is not really much of an abbreviation, but you'll see it both ways. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line that goes like this, kind of like that, and it's kind of a little grid. Okay. Next thing I do, I always put my known right here every single time. It always goes right here on the top of this grid. Down here below, I'm not going to put anything. It's really, if you want to put something on bl down below, you just put a 1. But I typically just leave that empty. Not a, not a big deal. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to, um, I want to identify my unknown in this problem, what I'm looking for. And so what I'm looking for in this problem is atoms. I'll put a circle around the word atoms. Now, when I put a circle around the word atoms, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to put that out here to the right. I'm going to write atoms. That's what I'm after. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to take my um, this word here, moles, right there, and I'm going to write it down here on the bottom. Moles. It's right there. Now, so I've got this set up almost, and we're we're really close. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equality. and I'm going to look up here at my equality, and here's my equality. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And I think, what number is attached to the word mole? And the number is 1. So I'm going to take this 1, and I'm going to write it down here just like that. The other side of the equality has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, this number right here. And I'm going to put that on the top. Okay, okay. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to cancel anything that's the same on the top and the bottom. The unit of moles is on the top and the unit of moles is on the bottom, so I'm going to cancel those units out. Now, in this little grid here, anything on the top or on the bottom gets multiplied, so I'm going to really multiply these two values together. And then I'm going to divide them by the values that are on the bottom the one and the one, and because they're ones, we don't really need to do anything to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go go ahead and multiply straight across the top. And tomorrow in class, I will show you how to punch this into your calculator. But I'm going to multiply it right now: 2.5 times 6.02 to the 23rd, and I'm going to come up with an answer of um, 1.505 times 10 to the 24th. And the atom that's left, or the units left over is atoms, so I'm going to write atoms. And this is copper, so I'm going to put copper as well. And that's the answer, but I'm not really done yet. Then I'm going to, I need to round this off to the correct number of sig figs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my known, and my known was given right here, and my known has two sig figs. So I'm going to round this value, my answer, off to two sig figs. So it becomes 1.5 times 10 to the 21st. 21st atoms, uh, or I'm sorry, that's 10 to the 24th atoms of copper, and there is my correct answer.
with a unit, and I always have to make sure I put a unit on my answer just like that. Okay, all right. Let's look at the next one here, and we're gonna kind of work it through the same steps that we just did. So it says calculate the number of molecules in 11.5 um, moles of uh, carbon dioxide. And so what I'm gonna do is first off, again, identify my known is 11.5 moles of CO2. And I'm gonna write that, make one of those grids, and I'm gonna put my known here. Always put my known there. And then what I want to do is I want to identify what's my unknown. What am I looking for? And it says calculate the number of molecules. So I'm looking for molecules. I'm going to write molecules over here. Then I take my known unit, which is right there, and I write that at the bottom. Well, I'm going to go back up to that same equality that I was up here before, and I'm putting a check mark by it right here. And I'm going to look for the number that's tied in with the word mole. And the number tied in with mole, I'm circling it right there, is 1. So I'm going to write 1 there. On the other side of the equality, we have Avogadro's number. So we're going to write Avogadro's number on the top. And this problem becomes a multiplication problem again. I'm going to cancel out moles on the top and on the bottom. So this problem is just 11.5 multiplied by 6.02 to the 23rd, and I get a pretty big number. Rounding it off to three sig figs, because I have three sig figs right here, and when I do that, I get 6.92 times 10 to the 24th, and I'm gonna include my unit molecules of CO2. Sorry about the bell there. We're gonna have a couple more problems next. Okay, so let's take a look at this next problem here. And um, this problem is very, very similar to what we've been doing so far. Um, there is a little bit of differences, though. So let's, let's take a look at it. So first off, we're going to calculate the number of moles in 9.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units of NaCl. So again, we first want to identify our known value. And our known value is the 9.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units of NaCl. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. 9.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units NaCl. Just like that. And I always put, remember, my known in that upper left hand quadrant right there of that little grid. Um, what I'm going to do next is I want to look at my, my, my unknown. And so I'm looking for moles, calculate the number of moles. And so I'm going to write the unknown over here moles just like that. Um, now, um, I'm going to use the equality. It's the same equality I've been using, and that's one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it's um, atoms, molecules, or formula units. And so in this case, I'm going to be using formula units. And so um, to fill in my grid here, I'm going to take the unit formula units that I have right here, and I'm going to rewrite it right down here. Formula units, and then I'm going to go up here to my equality of um, one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, and formula units is tied together with the number Avogadro's number. So I'm going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. Um, up here in my equality again, the word mole is tied to the number one, and so I'm going to put number one right there. So this is going to be, I'm going to multiply 9.5 times 10 to the 24th by one, which is going to be the same number. I don't really need to multiply that. And then I'm going to divide it by Avogadro's number. So let me do that here really quickly in my calculator. So I'm going to punch in on top 9.5 to the 24th divided by 6.02 to the 23rd. And so I get an answer of, um, it, in my calculator, it gives me 15.78. Um, I have two sig figs as my known, so I'm going to round it off to 16 moles of, um, let's see, we were looking at sodium chloride, NaCl. And that's how we do that um, mole conversion there. And just to double check, um, I'm going to 
cancel out my formula units and my formula units and yes, left with an answer in moles. Okay, I'm going to scroll down for just one more, or I guess I'm not, there's no more problems down there. So um, looks like we are good to go. Um, and there's going to be some practice problems to go along with this. If you have questions, let me know. Um, have a great day.